Good day, everyone. Today, I would like to share with you about the story of the sixth patriarch, where it talks about not to think of good and not to think of evil. The story started out when the sixth patriarch received the bow and the robe from the fifth patriarch, where he received uh, the lineage or the transmission from the fifth. Patriarch, and he was advised to move to the south because of the bow and the rope. Is the um, two symbols to signify the transmission of uh, the Chan lineage from one. Um, lineage master down to the other, and at that time, under the um, fifth patriarchs, he had many disciples. And when the sixth patriarch living to the south, then the disciples of the fifth patriarchs. Thinking that the um, material or the, the the bow and the rope will signify the meaning of the transmission of the line, and they think that the sixth patriarch is not worthy of receiving these uh, proofs, so they chase after. Um, the fifth page, uh, the sixth patriarchs, and um, Master Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch, uh, ran ran to the south, and one of the disciples of the fifth patriarch going after him, and his name is Hui Ming. After one month of uh, Chasing after the sixth patriarch, finally, in the mountain, in the forest, uh, mountain forest, he found uh, the sixth patriarchs. At that time, the uh, master Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch, then put down his bow and his rope on. The rock, and he hide away. Now approaching the uh, the uh, sixth patriarch, where Hui Ming saw the the bow and the rope, he was uh, thinking that, oh, this is the thing that I am after for so long. So he wanted to to take the rope. And the bow, but at that time, according to Sutra, it says that when he wanted to move the rope and the bow, then the rope and the bow won't move. He was unable to move the rope and the bow. But according to my understanding, I think that um, Hui Ming chasing after the uh, rope and the bow for one month earnestly, and now upon seeing the rope and the bow right in front of him, then he himself reflect. Maybe there was I was you know suspecting that he was reflecting on, on himself that this is these two things were right right in front of me. That is so easy. Why did the sixth patriarch 
you know, let these things just put in front of me uh, for me to take. It must be a reason. So upon reflecting, then he stated out loud that I'm here not because of the material things, which is referring to the rope and the bow. But I'm here is for the Dharma. Upon hearing that, Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch, came out from the bush and tell Hui Ming that, okay, since you're here for the Dharma, then please listen to me. And then the sixth patriarch, Hui Neng, saying that, not to think of good, not to think of evil. What is your original face? Upon hearing that, then Hui Ming got deep enlightenment. Now, what is the original face here referring to our own Buddha nature or the uh, so-called the Dharma body, and the uh, you know Master Hui Ming got enlightened because of discarding good and also discarding evil thoughts and seeing upon himself his own Buddha nature or original face. He got enlightened. Now for practitioners, then we need to know clearly what is good, what is evil. And we have to start it out with good and evil. We cannot just jump right there into not good and, um, you know, not evil. We can't just, you know, practice like this right away. But we need to start it out with good and knowing clearly what is evil so that we could avoid the evil things and do the good things. Now, do good things referring to doing the good deeds, then uh, it has some different levels. Say, for example, good could be to a, a degree of rather good, and then is come to a even better and to the best and to the absolute um, best. So in the beginning, we are clear about what is good, what is bad, what is evil. And good in the sense that maybe, first of all, is that you have to be good to yourself. We're referring to you will uh, do something that is not harmful to yourself, but to be a benefit to yourself. And also it refers to something like uh, we are being selfish, but not to do harm to the other. So in, in that sense, you're still doing good for yourself. But if you are selfish, but you're also are harming other, then it will cause bad effects to yourself. So the first level is to be good to yourself, not to harm other. And then you move on to a more um, better level, which is you're doing good for yourself, but also you're good for the other people, as well as you're good for the environment too. So uh, in that case, then you have um, you will create a very good environment for yourself. Say, for example, doing charity, uh, being uh, um, generous to the needy, um, all the charity works that you know you feed the the the, the hunger, and um, 
you build good roads for people and even good houses and then you know you support the the school and things like that then you make the environment better and of course that will have an effect on yourself so that you stay in a surrounding where it is good for yourself so that is the another level of being good and then for the Chan practitioners and then uh, of course we need to know what is good what is evil very clearly but while practicing still helping others to practice as well as you yourself practice the Dharma and helping others to practice the Dharma at the same time to cultivate compassion to others and doing so and then gradually gradually then we practice meditation and then we could move to a level where we don't think about good and don't think about evil we avoid the evil things still in the beginning we try to be better and better doing good and try to avoid uh, evil things and then later on even within our mind we don't think about good and we don't think about evils now why are we are doing the uh, good and evil now it refers to the practice say for example if we are doing meditation then um, we are coming from the scatter mind uh, first usually uh, this level referring to something it's not good so but we need to start from somewhere so we need uh, we start with the scatter mind while we are using the method of meditation and gradually gradually our scattered thoughts will decrease and then gradually uh, uh, we're still using the method and then we come to a more concentrated mind and then uh, more advanced then we come to a unific unification a state of mind and then you have to let go of even the unification of, uh, of the mind now the state of unification of the mind is the state where we feel that there's no separation with ourself and the thoughts and there's no separation of ourselves the thoughts and the environment but for Chan practice we do not um, encourage people to get into the state of um, samadhi which which is uh, you, you not you, you lost the sense of the environment so for practitioners then we moving to um, once we move to the uh, concentration state of mind and then reach the uh, unification state of mind then we need to somehow break through that uh, state of unification and to reach the state of no mind now for samadhi then we could refer to it as the level of good good things are doing good deeds and for the state of scatter mind it is, is the level of something that is not good so me we move from the uh, unwholesome to the wholesome or to the good but we also need to uh, discard that to reach the state of not thinking of um, good and not thinking of evil so for uh, us the 
goal of the Chan practice is that in our daily life, our mind is not thinking of good, not thinking of evil, but we could function in our everyday life very freely. There are people who think that if they read the the uh, platform sutra and uh, they think that well, since the sixth patriarch did not advocate on meditation, then they don't have to um, meditate. They don't have to practice meditation. But actually, in the Chan school, then uh, we usually encourage the practice of Chan in sitting as well as in our everyday activities. That is to say, in everyday uh, encounter with, uh, with things, dealing with events, and whatever we do, then we use the practice of Chan. And not only using the practice of Chan, but we try to decrease our self-centeredness so that our ego is decreased and decreased and decreased again and again until one day the um, self-centeredness is completely dissolved. Then we could really um, reach the state of uh, not thinking of good and not thinking of evil. Okay, thank you.